everybody running a little bit late this morning okay fine two hours late but here I am so uh, it is time for this morning's installment of seven minutes in the morning today we're going to talk about how this thing right here over my shoulder a fence for those of you who are listening makes for better neighbors and will make you a better neighbor stay tuned this is seven minutes in the morning where five days a week you get tips and hacks dedicated to helping business owners and leaders just like you find and break through the one thing that is preventing your success and now here's the host of seven minutes in the morning and your results coach Tom Rigsby yes Catherine a time pit it's exactly seven o'clock in the morning on the west coast hey uh, my name is Tom Rigsby this is seven minutes in the morning show where we talk about how to start grow and enjoy the benefits of business ownership uh, when you get here whether you're watching live or on the replay and I imagine a lot of people will watch on the replay today since we are off schedule with the show go ahead and leave a comment say hi hello good morning uh, why are you running late any of those things would be acceptable comments and uh, when we get to the end, if you get any value from our time together today, I would appreciate uh, a like, a heart, a thumbs up, uh, whatever is appropriate in the venue where you are watching or listening. So, this morning I wanted to talk about how fences make good neighbors. You've probably heard that saying before, but I'm going to take a little bit of a different uh, tack. I'm going to put a different spin on it. The whole idea behind fences make good neighbors is because they enforce boundaries right boundary boundaries are a good thing it keeps you you know on the road even their boundaries some of them are concrete some of them are just painted on the road but there are boundaries <clears throat> and those boundaries keep things moving efficiently and the birds are loud this time of day um, fences are efficient because <coughs> they you know kind of show us where the limits are and by keeping the neighbors on their side of the fence helping them um, abide by that limit can make for a happier time in our yard but here's the different spin I want to put on it um, they're also good for you I mean, maybe, maybe the road is an e the easier analogy here. You know, it's good for you if you stay in your lane because you don't run into somebody else, right, and smack up the car. The fences are good for you because they help you stay within your boundaries. Now, why is that important? Well, it, it is really easy for us as business owners, leaders, as a problem solver, <clears throat> to want to expand our reach or expand our footprint help more people and in doing so we get into areas that where we don't have any area of expertise we don't we're, we're, that's not our niche you know when we're starting a business always cranking on people to niche down niche down niche down be the master of your little pond right and then start worrying about the adjacent ponds. But when you do that too soon, you can get out of your lane, you uh, abandon or at least uh, provide less service to the pond that you originated in, and you don't understand the pond you're in there. So you've gotten outside of your boundaries, you've grown outside of your constraints, and now you're kind of all over the place. Focus, you know, follow one course until successful. Focus helps us achieve results, right? And you know, I was listening to um, a podcast yesterday um, with Jocko and Jordan Peterson. They were, but they were talking about one of the difficulties that service members have leaving the service is they lose that next mission, that next thing that they're working for, right? They lose their focus. So having these boundaries, having constraints, will serve to focus your attention and move you more effectively toward the goal and the outcome that you are trying to achieve. Catherine says fences are good because they show you your place and don't get caught up in the project that's not yours. 
Uh, that's hard out here sometimes when you hear the, the table saw running over there and you want to go see what's going on. But no, I, it, it, it is. I really like the first half of that. They're good because they show you your place. So that's all of this is not to say, hey, Brooke, yeah, getting out of your niche can be painful. And look, all of this is not to say that you should not grow, that you should not expand. Absolutely, that's part of of growth, of, of building a bigger and better business. But do it wisely. When you create constraints, when you say, in this 12-month period, my goal is to get here, and then nine months in, you have an opportunity to go, you know, take a hard right, well, what do you do? So without these constraints and without boundaries, you can lose the perspective of where you're trying to go. It's kind of like putting blinders on a horse, right? Used to when we had wagons and buggies and carriages pulled around by horses, they put these blinders on them so they didn't see the things that were going on beside them and got distracted. It gave them tunnel vision toward what they were working for. Absolutely that is important and absolutely it can be abused. But don't don't forego achieving your result for uh, being distracted by the other noise that goes on. Can help you realize what your niche really is? Yes, absolutely. If you have to write a description of the boundary, that can really go a long way toward helping you define the niche and understand where the boundaries and limits of your niche are. You know, I, one of the, the examples I used to use for this a lot more than I do now is the, uh, the convenience store that has thousands of line items right on on the shelves how many times you've been in a convenience store and you see something on the shelves got dust on it and no, nobody's coming in there to buy motor oil right i mean they're coming in to buy snacks and drinks and gas and you know whatever focus on the things that create value for your market do that very well so that it is self-sustaining then worry about other markets and growth opportunities. If it's a real market and if it's a real opportunity, it will be there. And you know, I, I hear people come, you know, counter this argument with first mover advantage. You've already taken the first move in the niche that you're in. Let's get that one working and then we'll worry about the next one, okay? All right, that's it for today. How am I doing on time? Look at that. Just slightly over seven minutes this morning. If you got value today, I would appreciate a heart, thumbs up, like, star, whatever is appropriate in the venue where you're watching or listening. And be sure and share this with somebody that you know that could benefit from hearing uh, our message today. I should be back on time tomorrow at 7 a.m. with a free coaching Friday installment. And if you have a question or a topic you'd like to try and stump me with, I'm still undefeated in the stump the coach category. You can bring it tomorrow and try, although nobody's been successful with that yet. You guys have a fantastic Thursday, and I'll talk to you tomorrow.